Great. So welcome everyone to the uh, seminar on computer architecture. So this course is provided by uh, Professor Anur Mutlu, who is very busy today. So I'm going to give you the logistics of this course and we will uh, release the recording uh, of Professor Anur Mutlu explaining the first part of uh, this lecture uh, up to slide 97. Uh, so I hope everyone for this course and um, yeah, we start recording. Uh, does anyone have any question before we start? Okay. So basically this is a very fascinating topic that we actually, all of us in Safari Research Group at ETH uh, interested in, and we have a lot of research in various topics in uh, computer architecture with um, uh, some um, interest in customization and hardware accelerators for different applications. Uh, so th the role of this course is uh, basically, we will cover a lot of uh, fundamental uh, principles and cutting edge research papers in this course related mainly about computer architecture, but we will also cover other applications that might get benefits from computer architecture or being a computer architect. For example, genome analysis, machine learning, artificial intelligence. We're going to show you the importance or the need, for example, to analyze our genome at scale, especially in this very tough time that we are going through, such as COVID-19, where we might need to analyze the genome of every individual, even before the flight or before entering school or university and so on. So you might, you might need to know if you have a COVID-19, for example. So all of these show you the importance uh, that we need as a computer architect to develop very efficient systems such that we can process the things uh, at scale for population scale or for a large country or for the entire world even. So we will have multiple components that are aimed at improving uh, the student technical skills in computer architecture. So this course is a seminar. So you are going to present papers and we will discuss them, analyze them deeply, but we'll also give you some principles and ideas about computer architecture. Uh, in the past and even in recently and how it will be in the next five, 10 years. And based on these technical skills presented by different papers and your help in critically uh, thinking about the ideas presented in the paper and the way we analyze this paper, we will have a technical presentation of the concepts and the paper. And with all those skills, you will get a lot of ideas that you can develop throughout the course from different presentation, different topics, different flavors, uh, and um, a lot of uh, topics related to computer architecture and many more. So um, the, the technical presentation basically um, is about a paper that you will analyze, you will present to the class, and then you will lead the discussion through online, and um, uh, which is normally written forms and using Moodle or Piazza. And uh, we will have also a synthesis report at the end of the uh, course or the semester, where you will also list some of the ideas that you have uh, learned throughout the semester. So I'm going through um, this in detail in the next few, few slides. So um, you will be familiar with key research directions after, uh, especially after uh, listening to many of these topics. So if you listen to um, different architecture uh, for computers, and then memory systems, then the security and the hardware side, and then how you can leverage specialized accelerator to accelerate machine learning or image processing and so on. So you will get a lot of different aspects of different areas in research. And then you might develop your special interest in one of these directions. So what are the key goals of this course? So this course is to teach you and for you to learn how to rigorously analyze, present, and discuss papers and ideas in computer architecture. So it will be exactly as if you are in real conference setup where you need to present your own paper and then you discuss it with colleague 
you present some ideas, defend your proposal, maybe they will propose something in you that you'll get benefits from it, then you develop your own ideas further, and then you push another research papers and so on. This is how research cycle will continue. And we are going to teach you this, lateral teaching you how to uh, analyze a paper critically and generate uh, some ideas, find the weaknesses of this paper, find the strength of that paper. And based on all of this, we are going to discuss it with um, the students of this course. And then um, you might join us at the end of the course and do your own research. And this is how we have very good experience with the previous uh, semesters. So this is, I think, the sixth time we offer this course. And every time we offer some of the students in this course to join us and do research as um, a free research course or as a bachelor thesis, master thesis, and so on. All right, so what are the steps to achieve the key goals that we presented? So there are a few steps, there are a few responsibilities for the presenter, uh, which is the student, which is you. And what you need to do is read, of course, without reading the paper, you will never get an idea about what does it look like, uh, how, what are the strengths or the weaknesses of the paper. And it might not be only about the paper that you, um, that you, you receive through this course. It's about other papers as well. You need to check the related works, what have been done before, and what are the other proposals similar to the paper that you have. And without reading these, you will never get the weaknesses of the paper you have in hand. So you need to read more other papers and uh, critically analyze one of them, which is the assigned to you, as well as analyze the other paper. They might have more interesting idea presented elsewhere. They might have more efficient proposed, more efficient architecture with less overhead, for example, more energy efficiency, lower cost, and so on. And uh, <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, and uh, after uh, analyzing all of this with the help of the mentors, so we are going to assign mentors for you to help you throughout the, the, uh, the preparation for your talk. And after all of this and several rounds of uh, preparing, correcting, getting feedback from the mentors, then uh, get ready for the presentation, then you will be uh, ready for the stage, you will present yourself and give a very clear talk. Think about if you are presenting to a conference, for example. You will present it and you will receive some questions. We will have a very good slot for discussion, about uh, 15 minutes actually. And you will receive all these questions from all of us as a TA, as uh, from Professor Onormutu, from other students and so on and you are responsible to answer them. It's okay if you don't know one of these questions because you cannot cover anything, uh, you cannot cover everything basically, but um, it's important that you understand the, the basics of this paper, the fundamental idea that this paper was built on. And um, you need to analyze and synthesize, you need to show your efforts basically in uh, extracting the weaknesses. This is your job as a student and presenting in this course. But of course, your responsibility uh, do not end at the day of the presentation. After, even if you present, you will lead the discussion in the online uh, Moodle session or Piazza. And we have a lot of discussion there, very fruitful. Uh, it will continue throughout the semester where you receive uh, more feedback and the things that you didn't cover through your talk. And you need to answer all of these and you need to be active basically. Uh, so there are other steps for participants who are non-presenter. You need to discuss. And to discuss, you need to understand the paper. So before you come to any presentation, you need to at least skim the paper, read it very fast, get the idea, the key problem that this paper trying to tackle. And uh, try to understand the concepts presented in the paper, 
you might find some weaknesses yourself, like something uh, they claim in the paper, but you didn't see any results justifying these claims. So these are very important to capture and to ask throughout the uh, presentation or after the presentation during the discussion session. You need to ask questions. This is very important for you, for your grade and for your benefits such that you interact and understand the things that you may not be uh, thinking of while you are reading this paper. And again, it's important to uh, analyze and synthesize in a meeting, after the meeting, and at the course end through the synthesis report. I'm going to tell you more about this report. So what are the topics of papers and discussion? Uh, so basically, um, within uh, it's very soon, within the next few days, we're going to send you a list of papers that you need to pick one of them, only one. And this paper might be one of these topics. So we have, uh, we have hardware security, we have architectural acceleration mechanism for key application like machine learning, graph processing, bioinformatics, and maybe more. So we have a lot of papers covering uh, fundamental research in memory systems, especially it's, this topic is very close to, to our hearts in Safari Research Group, I would say. Most of the papers coming from our group are about memory system and how improving the memory devices and to make the computer architecture uh, more efficient. We have uh, papers about interconnects uh, processing inside memory, this is a very interesting topic. The various fundamental and emerging ideas, paradigms in computer architecture, of course, hardware, software, code design, and how you can design things in a CPU and have hardware accelerator all working in parallel to have very efficient processing, for example. About fault tolerance, energy efficiency, uh, heterogeneous and parallel systems and new execution models. So you'll see uh, various different topics covering uh, almost all uh, interests in, in hardware and computer architecture. So to recap, some goals of the course again. So our goal is to teach you, to enable, to empower you to uh, think critically actually and uh, we will uh, prepare you to start your research, your own research, if you're interested in doing masters, for example, or for master's student to do PhD and so on. So think about you are going to a conference, how they are going to review your own paper and how you'll present your own paper. You discuss some ideas, you get more feedback from the community about the things that you are proposing. Even if you are not interested in going through academia for masters or PhD, this is still very useful for you to analyze basically anything, even if you read simple book and you try to uh, generate some ideas from the book or to get some weaknesses that this author didn't mention. This is very, um, a very a nice way of analyzing uh, some articles and more. So we will teach you how to think broadly, basically. The, the paper is not the goal. Our goal is not to criticize that specific paper or that specific author or that specific proposal. But in fact, it's in your job, you need to analyze more than the paper that got assigned to you. So think about reviewing 10 papers talking about the same topic. Then you will see the full picture rather than focusing in very simple proposal. You can think about other way of um, research that try to tackle the same problem. Then you'll get a better ideas, better understanding of how to solve that problem in more efficient way than the paper or the proposal you have. So at the end of this course, you will see that you get a lot of benefits, especially with the help of the mentors. These mentors are basically um, authors of the, some of the papers that listed uh, in, the, in this course. So when we assign the list of papers, and uh, when we send it to all of you, you will notice that some of these papers are basically from our own research group, such that you will get the, the luxury to uh, get the help from the first author of the paper himself or herself. So you will get a lot of benefits. Imagine that the guy who did the work or the girl who did the work, she's in front of you. 
then you can analyze anything with him or with her. You can get ideas, things that was missing from this work, maybe other important papers that, um, that um, developed on top of this work and so on. But not only that, you have also some list of papers that are very old, but fundamental. Think about 40 years back or 30 years back, and we have all these proposal. And then we, when we present them these days, we will see uh, the beauty of computer architects in the past, how they were thinking about the future. And if we are in the current time, how we can think about the next 20 years, for example, how we can develop the things for the future. So again, you will get familiar with, uh, with the key first steps in research. So when you start your master's or uh, degree, uh, so you need to do a literature review, for example. You need to list all the papers uh, that are around a topic of interest and then start to analyze them and try to extract weaknesses. This is how you get your own research ideas and then you start working on them. So this will be very helpful, I believe, to all of you. And by, uh, by listening to all of these topics uh, from your colleague, from the students who are presenting them, you will get a full picture of different aspects of research in computer architecture. So if you are not interested in memory system, you can listen to talks that are in machine learning, artificial intelligence, genome analysis, or maybe uh, software, hardware uh, co-design, or security, for example, and many more. Okay, so this is the research cycle. This is not about this course only or about research papers, but this is basically about um, the research in any area, not necessarily computer architecture. So the first step, you need to read the existing work. Without reading it, you cannot have the ground truth. You cannot put your foot in a solid stage where you can um, kick your research and start doing very good research. So you need to analyze papers, understand the problem. What is it actually? And then once you understand the problem, you start to question that paper. So, okay, why you did, th why you did it this way? Uh, how about doing it in a different way? How about uh, we change this parameter? How about we change this architecture? Okay, I'm going to do something fundamentally totally new not about uh, processing in CPU or new algorithm. How about we process the things in the memory itself, the DRAM or 3D stack memory, or even the storage unit, we can do processing there. So by questioning everything in the existing papers, you are going to brainstorm and generate some questions that you might not uh, necessarily be aware of. So you need the help of colleague or to do brainstorming with other experts that's why we'll have the mentor meeting, for example. And during this mentorship, you can ask the, the, the mentors who are authors of uh, a lot of papers about this idea, what if we do it this way, why they do it that way, and so on. Based on all this discussion, you will develop your own ideas. They should be very new if you read the existing papers, or at least the most recent, the most advanced uh, papers. After generating these ideas, you will collaborate, you will work hard, do a lot of analysis, experiment, design, simulation, and so on, until you get the paper in, in a very good shape. And then you submit it to a conference, for example, or a journal, and you get ready uh, to present it. And then you might get more feedback, then you will go through this cycle again, or you might already successfully, uh, uh, the paper get published, and then you will go for another project. So you'll go through this cycle again and again. So this is very helpful for you in your life. All right, do we have any questions so far? Anything was not clear? All right. So how many of you can hear me? Can everyone raise his hand, her hand? All right, here's one, two. Three, four, five. Come on, we need more. Okay, please, everyone. Okay, great, very good. Thank you so much. All right, so now I'm going through the logistics of this course. 
So again, this course is given by Professor Anur Mutlu, who joined um, at EDH in September uh, 2015, uh, five years, almost five years back. And he was a professor at CMU before that. He got his PhD from uh, UOT Austin, and he joined industry for some of the time as a visitor or uh, even working there, for Google, VMware, Microsoft Research, Intel, EMD. And we got a lot of fun from all these, and they are good collaborators to us. And um, yeah, as Safari Research Group, okay. So before that, yeah, this is the best way to reach Professor Anur Mutlu, which is the Gmail uh, address. So um, yeah, the ETH address is fine, but this is the best uh, way to reach him. And uh, through this link, you can see a list of projects that we are doing in Safari Research Group and more things about Professor Anur Mutlu and our research group. So the things that we are doing or research and teaching in computer architecture in general, and with uh, more topics in computer system, hardware security, and bioinformatics, and many more, such as memory system, which is uh, taking a large portion of our research of effort in the group. Uh, we have a lot of work on hardware security, fault tolerance, hardware software cooperation, and customized specialized architecture for uh, genome analysis, bioinformatics, and general health and medicine. All right, so for the course. So uh, besides Professor Anur Mutlu, we have um, me, Mohammed Alsar, uh, Juan as instructors, and we have a large number of TAs and mentors. So we have Jisung. I think um, most, of, most of us are present uh, now in the meeting. So yeah, we have Jisung, Jawad, uh, Lewis, uh, Hayu, Rahul, Joao, Geraldo, Jan Fertina, Hassan, Constantinos, Jeremy, Nika, Minash, uh, Gagan, Costa, and Girai. So I hope I didn't forget anyone. So all of these are very nice guys. Uh, they are very helpful. They did a lot of research, uh, different topics, totally different topics in Safari Research Group. So this is a very good opportunity for everyone to learn from their expertise. So you need to know them, their research, all of these information, uh, you can find them in Safari Research Group. If you go to the people section, you will see all of them and you'll see the research interest next to each name. And if you click on their names or whatever, then you will get their publication list and then you can get more about what they are doing on, what they are working on and so on. So we will have two mentors for each student. So each presentation will be assigned to mentors based on the paper assigned to you. So probably one of the mentors will be one of the authors of that paper. So again, that will be very good chance for everyone to learn from the authors of the paper itself. So you will have to meet them at least twice before your presentation. And without doing this, you will lose a lot of things. So it's very important that you attend to this meeting, pay great attention to the feedback you receive from the mentors. It will be so much fun and same time, very interesting. So uh, do we have any question? Okay, very good. So what are the requirements to uh, pass this course or to call this course a successful one? So basically you need to attend all meetings. So please, if you have urgent thing, email us in advance, but basically you need to attend all of them, especially that we are going online. So it might be a bit easier for everyone to attend it. So each student need to present a single paper. So easy deal, right? Yeah, it might not look as easy as this, but if you do a good job, you will learn a lot of things. So you need to prepare for a presentation with engagement from the mentor. Basically, we'll have two mentors and you will prepare a full presentation. You will lead the discussion after the presentation, which is 15 minutes of discussion. And then you will have another session of discussion, which is the online through uh, Moodle or Piazza, we will have it. So um, after presenting or during the presentation, the other non-presenters, they need to participate during the meeting. So you will get a part of your grade based on this. This is very important. It's not about the grade, it's about your benefits. 
for your own benefits, you need to read the papers, commit very fast, or read it carefully. And then you need to prepare questions based on the talk or based on uh, what you have uh, read uh, from the paper itself. And you need to contribute um, with thoughts, ideas, what about doing this? What if we do it uh, this way? Or even like um, uh, fundamental questions such that, I didn't understand this mechanism. Can you give me more about this way of uh, doing it? Why do, you, why do you think they do it this way and so on? So after the presentation, we are going to release a quiz. That's a very simple quiz, basically five multiple choice questions for each presentation. And you have two hours to solve this quiz and submit it. So the two hours start right after the lecture. So everyone uh, needs to comment, to add comments on paper in the online review system. So this is after the presentation, we are going to start the thread for each paper and we will start some, um, some um, discussion topics there, maybe video supporting how that architecture works or links to more details or articles that explain this paper in a different way and so on. So anything you can think about it, you can add it to the, to the online discussion. And towards the end of the semester, we will give you a synthesis report asking question about the things that you have learned from the course or what were the most interesting papers, what were the second interesting paper and so on. Second most interesting paper and um, um, what are the research ideas that you have developed from your own presented paper or other papers. And one important question, all of them are important, but this as important and the other as the others is that if you are interested in doing research with us. Uh, so this is very helpful for you. And if you need uh, more uh, to learn more about this report, you can uh, check the web page of the previous semester, for example, and download the synthesis report, have an idea about it. So you will have, I think, around a month to submit this report back. So I hope all of these uh, requirements and responsibilities are very clear to all the students of this course. Do we have any questions? So let me check the chat. All right. So it seems the things are very clear. Hopefully. Okay. So we already prepared the course web page. You can access it through this link for fall 2020. You will see uh, some of the materials already uploaded, especially these slides. You can have them there in PDF and uh, PowerPoint format. And we will regularly uh, upload the things before the lecture. So if we're going to present, uh, or the student going to present today or now, you will see the slides uploaded in the early morning or just a few hours before the, the lecture. At least you will see some materials there. And we will update them as uh, uh, time progresses. And you will see there very useful information in general about the course and all the announcements we have, due dates, homework, the previous semesters uh, for the same course or computer architecture course, digital design, and other useful topics uh, covered uh, or related to this course. All right, so yes, we will have homework zero. Don't worry, this is not kind of homework where you need to solve, but this is more about yourself. So tell us uh, who you are and uh, what are the things that you are interested in, why you joined this course, and what you predict or what you expect from this course, and something like that. So don't worry about it. It's very easy to uh, fill, the, uh, fill the, the form or, the, uh, or answering the questions. And you need to submit it back to us uh, on last, the due date is September 24th, so the end of the day. So please, this is very important. Without submitting your answers, we are not going to schedule you a slot for presentation. So please think about this. If you didn't submit it, then uh, it looks like you are dropping the course. So this is very important for you. So the homework is already online. So you can access it now. 
uh, please um, try to submit it on time. This is very important for um, assigning you a paper, as I mentioned. So we are going to release a list of papers uh, for you to pick one of them or to uh, you need to basically um, not pick one but you need to um, have multiple choices so you can have um, reference preferences for 10 papers five papers uh, you can rank them I think from one to five where five is uh, I want that paper and for uh, I list wanted that paper and so on so um, Please try to give more than one choice for papers. We will have a lot of various different papers. So um, um, we will try our best to give you the, the most preferred paper, but there is no guarantee there. It depends on how many uh, person pick a paper and so on. But the due date for you to submit uh, your uh, preferences is again, September 24th. So same date as you submit the homework zero. Again, if you don't submit this, we cannot uh, schedule you a, a slot for presentation. So if you don't submit homework zero or your preferences, we are sorry to not uh, continue the course for you or offer you a slot. But don't worry, this is very easy to do, right? Just fill some basic information about yourself and pick um, one to five papers or one to 10 papers. We will give you more details on this. Uh, through the Moodle. We will send uh, an email with detailed information about how to pick the papers. Okay, any question? All right, so how to deliver a good talk? So this is a difficult question. Um, apparently there is no one single way of how to deliver a good one but there are a few things that you need to avoid such that you don't uh, fill in the same mistakes of the others. So anatomy of a good paper review. Um, okay, so this is a general template where you can have the things. And if you follow this template, for sure you will get a very good um, talk, especially if you pay attention to the content of each of these sections. So of course the first title or the first slide you need to have the title of the papers and you need to list all the authors of that paper and the venue where uh, this paper has been uh, presented is a journal conference. So the conference and the year, for example. And of course you need to add your name there as a presenter, but you need to list all the authors for sure. So the second thing you're going to summarize the paper. So you need to give the, uh, the a summary of the paper such that whoever attending your talk will get some ideas about what's this paper presenting, what's the problem try to tackle. I don't need to wait maybe one hour to get what you are talking about and so on. So this summary is basically one to two slides and what's the problem the paper is trying to solve, what are the key ideas of the paper, key insights that uh, we get from the paper, what are the key mechanisms? What's the implementation or the key idea of the paper? And what are the key results, key conclusion? So this is, we call it a summary slide where you have all these things. And then you start explaining each point in detail. So not necessarily the entire section is one, two slides, but you will have the summary slide in the beginning and then you start elaborating more in all of these things. So after you have finished the main content or the core of the presentation, we're going to another interesting uh, portion of your slides. So the first portion is very important to have it, but basically it's like summarizing the paper. You don't have much of contribution there except how you deliver a clear talk or how you convey the, the right message that the paper tried to convey. But the second part, is where you need to contribute the most. So what are the strengths of the paper? Does the paper solve the problem well? Is it well written? So here is not enough to mention something like, the paper is very good, full stop. No, this is not enough. So you need to give something interesting. So give a lot of information why you think this paper is strong enough 
or what are the strengths that make this proposal, this idea is very elegant. So is it energy efficiency? Is it zero overhead with the hardware side? Or nobody have think about this way to solve other areas such as medicine, genomics, machine learning, image processing, and uh, more things about the proposal. Make it very interesting. And the mentors are going actually to help you a lot with this side. But you need to contribute basically. The weakness is the same thing. So it's not enough to say this paper is bad, was not well written, and um, I didn't understand it, something like that. You need to elaborate more. So um, every paper or every idea has a weakness. There is no way that the paper has no weaknesses. Otherwise, the research, the research cycle won't continue. So this doesn't mean the paper is necessarily bad, but because of the time, nobody can do everything about a topic in a short time or in a specific project. You need to divide into different projects and you start in this project and then you have something left for future work, then you carry over and run another project and do further research. So this means that we have a lot of room for improvement and future research to accomplish these goals. And there are some weaknesses, for example, the authors are lazy to not um, justify this or not to uh, prove this. So they just put uh, VC claims or they didn't explain the things in details. So there are a lot of things to um, uh, mention here as a weakness. And the next, uh, part is about ideas and thought. So after um, uh, completing all this um, analysis of the paper, what are the weaknesses and the strengths, now it's your turn to read other papers and generate ideas based on this paper and other papers. So can you do better? To answer this question, of course, you don't need to do the experiment yourself and find more observation, for example. No, you cannot do that or we don't ask you to do that. But what you can do is find another research papers that uh, did the same thing or they tackle the same problem, then they uh, find more interesting results, for example. So you need to list all of these papers, give a summary of those papers and what they follow, what are the approaches that they uh, follow to achieve a better performance or a better uh, proposal. Of course, you need to present your ideas. And many, many of the students from the previous semester, they come up with very great ideas. Uh, and when they join us in Safari Research Group, they prove or they experimentally did these ideas and they prove that it works well. And they publish paper out of that, actually. So what are the key takeaways? Uh, what you learned, what you enjoyed, disliked, is this approach, uh, approach uh, worth it to investigate it? Should we uh, go to other uh, methods, other um, mechanisms, other hardware architecture that might show more benefits uh, to fields like we never think about it, for example, in medicine, can you um, design a small device doing the same uh, method that the paper presented for another application? Can we uh, apply the same thing to a diff totally different application? Of course, it will be limited, but it will be great to apply something that already been used for a long time, but we never think that will provide benefits for this application or even not about the, the, the ideas, but about the things that you learned yourself. So about the paper, about the research direction in general, and so on. And after that, you'll start uh, leading the discussion. Of course, uh, a student can stop you anytime in this and uh, can ask you a question, but we prefer to have it in the discussion session, but feel free to ask anytime. And the, 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 this review or the, the, the summary is basically within 20 minutes and we will give uh, the large chunk of the time to the uh, critiques, to the strengths, weaknesses and the ideas because this is the goal of the course. So we already have offline um, meetings with the mentors where they teach you everything about how to analyze, how to do the things, what are the weaknesses and so on. But when it comes to the online session where you present to the class, now it's the time to discuss and spread the knowledge. So you already learned something. Now you need to teach the other student about it and share your ideas, strengths, weaknesses, and all of these. 
All right, so I think we already uh, cover uh, most of the things about how to uh, prepare a good review. Of course, there are a lot of details uh, underneath each section here, but it's very hard to cover them here. That's why we assign you mentors for that. All right, so we divide the talk into two parts. The first part where you summarize the paper, you mentioned the idea, the key mechanism, the architecture they did, the key results and the conclusion of the paper. This shouldn't take 20 to 25 minutes at most. And the other um, part of the talk, um, about 10 minutes for critiques, such as strength, weaknesses, alternatives, and you have 15 minutes for the class uh, discussion. Of course, we can extend it a bit. So feel free to prepare more questions. Don't worry about the time. And in general, we will have 15 minutes for each presentation. So for each session, we will have two presentations. Two students will be presenting uh, two papers in each session. So in total, we have 22 students. So that means uh, we have 11, um, uh, 11 sessions for student presentation. All right, uh, so more advices on paper review talks. So when doing the paper review or analysis, you need to be very critical. Uh, what does that mean? So um, don't put yourself in the shoe of the author and present the paper, but instead you need to critically analyze it and show whether this is a weakness, this is a strength based on facts and some uh, ground truth that you have based on other research papers. So you need to, um, at the same time, you need to be fair to the paper such that you present it in a nice way present all the ideas, all the things, or even the claims that the paper mentioned, and leave the critiques to the weaknesses, for example, if you have any critical point about the paper. But first you need to present the paper, uh, and, uh, uh, give some uh, just to the paper, but in the same time you need to be very critical about uh, the weaknesses and the claims. So always think about better ways of solving the problem or related problems. If you question the method that they follow. So if you see some memory bound workload or compute bound uh, workload, so why they follow processing in memory? Why not um, provide a simple CPU algorithm to solve the problem? Is data movement a problem really in the, for that application and so on? So try always to question, question everything uh, related to that paper. So you need to question again the problem, um, read background papers, you need to understand the principles, you need to present them in a very nice way such that all the audience will understand it without having the need to read the paper. So of course we ask everyone to read or skim the paper, but this is not necessarily. If you are a very good presenter, then you will give the general idea of the paper in a few slides, and that should be enough for the presenter to understand you. Because in the conference setup, don't expect everyone to know what's the problem you are trying to tackle. So don't think that people know what is memory system, what is this, what is that, even if this is a computer architecture conference, for example, or what is genome analysis, what is machine learning, and so on. So try to give the idea that you are trying to uh, present or the problem that this paper tried to tackle. So again, um, this is all about the research cycle, but you can think about it in different uh, area and different uh, research um, direction of the life, or in general, when you read an article, newspaper, where you need to um, justify or question every aspect of that article, for example. And this is how things progress in science and engineering and how you can make uh, big leaps because without uh, having weaknesses of the previous work, there is no need to do further work, right? If there is no weakness or there's no problem to tackle, then why you are doing research? But this is not true, actually. Um, th everything has a weakness, as we mentioned. But you need to be very critical, again, when analyzing a paper. And there are a few sample text reviews provided online, and the mentor will help you with that as well, how to, re how to make a good review for existing papers or when a conference set up. 
But remember, this is very important thing. Try to avoid rat hole discussions. What are the rat holes? So rat holes, basically, these are the things that don't lead to anything. So for example, you have a paper and you might list it as a weakness that, okay, they evaluate the performance based on this workload, but they didn't evaluate it for that workload. Okay, if they did evaluate it for different workloads, what are the insights or what are the benefits? Did they change the architecture? Did they change the proposal? So these are the things nobody can cover every single workload in the life. So these are hard to evaluate. So please try to avoid these as a weaknesses. Same thing for metrics. Um, nobody can measure everything you can think of, like memory utilization, speed, execution time, uh, energy consumption, and too many things. So these, what we call big rat holes, especially the workload, always the reviewer or the different mindset, very difficult mindset, always ask you, okay, uh, try your method on this data set, try on that data set. So try to avoid all these rat holes. Same thing with configuration details. Of course, sometimes the configuration make a lot of sense if you change it to different configuration. What if we use this configuration? Because we know um, to be just to that tool, when we compare to it, it, it works the best when we have this configuration. But sometimes it doesn't make sense to try with all different configuration, to have a sweep of all different parameters. It doesn't make sense. Of course, we need to cover a good range of these values, but not all of them. And this is what is mentioned in this uh, very good book recommended by Professor Anur Mutlu, The Art of Computer System, uh, Systems Performance Analysis. Uh, so in this book, they, um, they uh, discuss this thing, uh, this the rat holes uh, thing in details. And they have it as an, in the decision maker's point of view, actually where you can have the same rate rat holes for any problem, actually, anything. You can say, okay, this analysis was not enough. This discussion was not enough. But what is enough here? We cannot define it, right? So try always to avoid these when you're critically analyzing a paper or uh, anything, basically, in life. So they mention here a very important paragraph. Um, so even if the performance analysis is correctly done and presented, it might not be enough to persuade your audience, the decision makers, actually. When you are seeking funding or when you are presenting in a conference, so don't think that you can just, uh, you can um, um, satisfy everyone, basically. You cannot do that. And they list, um, so, yeah, so we still have about one hour. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect I will exceed this much of time, but yeah, we will have a large list of the things that you might get rejected or your paper gets rejected because of these reasons. So these are reasons for not accepting the results of an analysis. And all of these sounds very stupid to get rejected because of these uh, simple things. So these are like, very critical mindset if we have it in a conference, in a good conference or a good place to review your paper and so on. So um, you can see a lot, of, um, a lot of the things, for example, this needs more analysis. Sure, yeah, we can do a lot of analysis, but what is enough again here? You need a better understanding of the workload. It improves performance only for long IO packets, jobs, files, most of the IO packets, job files are short, for example. Okay, so um, someone might even question the, the method, something novel that you have did, something revolutionary, like non-conventional, uh, for example, and they said, okay, that impacts the hardware that has a high overhead, for example, this is beyond uh, today technology. So don't think about today technology. In the future, it might get changed, it might totally get different. So most of the things we have in our hand, we couldn't think about it if we think like uh, 40 years back, smartwatch, uh, mobile devices, uh, very small devices for genome analysis, for example, smart cars and so on. Or the last point here in the list, why we need to change 
it's working fine. I don't need a new proposal or new research paper about this topic. All of these are very bad mindset that can prevent the progress and research cycle. So here you can get more uh, advices, more tips on doing or uh, conveying or um, giving a very clear talk, very um, excellent talk from other uh, people, other famous people. For example, this link, uh, you can uh, check the tips there. They are very important, very useful actually. So every sentence matters uh, basically. So um, you need to question these sentences sometimes they explain the things in a few sentences so it's important to pay attention to that it might justify the things it might give reasons for uh, why they follow this method or even um, reason for picking that workload and so on so this is very important the audience prefers not to think what does that mean so don't don't imagine that you can give a figure and then tell the audience, okay, this is the figure, this is how they did it, and then you skip it and move to the next slide. No, you need to explain every single thing. Exactly as you spend time, you, you have two meetings with mentors, you read the paper, you already analyze it, you need to do the same thing to the audience in about 25 minutes. So this is very challenging, but so much fun to do. So think about you are the authors of the paper and you need to teach the audience about the problem, about the analysis, the architecture and all these aspects. So surprises are very bad. Don't jump from one topic to another. Don't jump from an idea, then directly go to the results. So you need to explain it uh, step by step. You need to introduce it gradually. Don't uh, make all these um, 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 surprises and so on. So before you move to the next slide, for example, you need to introduce what is next. And um, you need to tell them that I'm going to explain this in the next few slides, something like that. Or why they propose this, I'm going to tell you the, res the reasons in the workload or in the application. Or uh, don't explain a method or something they um, propose uh, without explaining actually uh, what are the basics for that area. So if you are trying to uh, explain a proposal in genomics, you need to give them some ideas about genomics. What is genome? What is the DNA? Uh, what are all these things and how you introduce the problem? Then you present what they have presented as a solution to that problem. So as I, as I said, uh, mm, sorry, as I said, um, you need to explain every figure, graph, equation. Otherwise, why you add it to the slides? If you are not going to talk about it, don't add it to your slides. When improving the talk, the audience is always right. What does that mean? So if someone tell you these colors are not nice or this figure is not clear, try to change something. Try to pay attention to that. Try to appreciate the feedback you receive from the mentors. So believe me, all the mentors we assign to you are well experienced and they already done a lot of research. They might done the paper that you, you are reading and so on. So when they tell you something, please appreciate it and try to improve it. All right, I hope everything is clear so far. Okay. So this is an example that Professor Honor likes uh, to present in his uh, lectures. So this is a paint for one of the artists. And um, he, he uh, yeah, this is the Salvador Dali, who's an artist who paint this uh, paint. It's very nice, look like normal. Okay, it looks nice, I would say. We have some of the things in the background and so on. But it looks normal, right? Nothing special about it, I would say. But see, for example, the next uh, paint for the same artist. So it looks like something really crazy. Uh, a lot of new ideas, new things. You, read, you, you need to really uh, look at it in deep to understand the things. You need to look at every portion, try to analyze it, see, wow, we have giraffe on fire, for example, here. We have drawers have a human being here, we have a lot of things going on. 
So that is something not trivial to think about. So this is for the same artist and think about the research in the same way. This is how the things progresses. You start learning the basics, the fundamental, and then you start getting all these ideas, crazy ideas after you have very solid uh, ground truth or solid stage where you can step in and then try to think more after finding the weaknesses of existing work and so on. So the takeaways. So um, before presenting a paper or before uh, being better than the authors in presenting that ideas, you need to learn the basic principles. And as I mentioned this several times throughout uh, this presentation, um, without learning the basics or the fundamentals for genomics or machine learning or um, just the problem that you are trying to address uh, through your talk, you cannot criticize other papers. So you need to learn the basic principle before you consciously choose to break them. Same thing with the, the artist who paint that crazy um, paint, like um, he learned the basics, he learned how to draw nice, uh, nicely the people, the human, the things, the objects here and there and uh, study these things in detail. And then it took him, I think around 10 years to go for the next level. So from 1924 to 1937. So it's almost um, 10 years, literally more than 10 years to get to the next level in this. So same thing with research. Don't think that you can get to the next ideas without reviewing a lot of papers, without listening to experts in the field and so on. All right, so this is the most th important thing in the, the slides that we already covered up to now. But now how to participate, which is still important, um, and how to make the best out of this. You need to, first, before this, you need to attend all lectures, basically, as we mentioned. This is uh, a final. And then you need to come prepared. So at least you can skim the paper, read the abstract, read the results, what the, the problem they are trying to tackle, what is the key takeaways um, from the paper. And then try to critically evaluate the paper and prepare questions for the presenter. Think about new ideas. Maybe if you type the title in Google, you might get different papers that try to um, tackle the same problem. So maybe you can, from that perspective, you can think about different ideas and then ask the presenter, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Has been this studied before or anybody, uh, anyone uh, evaluates this ideas in, uh, for different applications and so on. And you need to bring these questions, discussion points, things that you may didn't understand from the paper. You can ask the presenter for all of these. But of course, be critical. Don't uh, bring just simple things that they are obvious. You need to be critical when picking on the paper, on the authors, on the work itself, on the problem, the problem they are trying to tackle. So um, we will brainstorm, all of us. So don't feel shy to ask questions. This is very important for you to learn. Without asking questions, it's very hard for you to understand the concepts or to understand the new ideas that the presenter is uh, going to discuss with you. So feel free to discuss. It's very friendly discussion. Don't feel shy. Um, they are student. The presenter's student is one of you. So just have this atmosphere, friendly atmosphere, to ask questions and pay attention and uh, discuss all these ideas. So even after the presentation day, you have the, the, the opportunity to um, discuss the things offline through the Moodle, uh, through the Piazza, through face-to-face -face meeting maybe with the presenter. You can send him emails. You can discuss with the mentors, with the author, with the professor, or with all of us. All right, so this is a guided talk preparation. We already give you some hints about a very good way of delivering a talk, but this is in more systematic way, or we have an algorithm for that. And we are going to give you more details on this as time progresses. So first thing, after assigning a paper, after finalizing all the assignment, please check your presentation date. 
and um, prepare very well for that. So again, you need to meet with your mentors twice. So you need to arrange your time from the date you, um, you get the paper assigned to the presentation date, you need to allow for two meetings. And before these two meetings, you need to prepare some draft of your slides such that you can get useful feedback from the mentors. Of course, if you start early, it's very important for you. If you start early, then this um, algorithm will be very successful and this entire course will be very useful for you. And you need to study your paper, for, of course. Without studying it, you cannot criticize um, the things presented in the paper. And there are three C's of reading. Carefully reading it, critically analyze the things, and creatively, creatively, creatively think about the, the things presented in the paper. So you need to look up the terms, understand the basics, and possibly, possibly read uh, cited papers, for example. And you need to find a limitation through critical thinking of um, these weaknesses, strengths, and so on. And then you need to have creativity and having new ideas, for example, uh, through reading uh, related works or through uh, proposing um, um, future work or um, a research project, how to improve this work and new ideas from your own uh, uh, thinking. Try examples by hand, try the things to explain it in different way than they presented in the paper. Sometimes they don't present figures in a nice way. Uh, sometimes the, the way they explain the things can be explained in way nicer, uh, different method, for example, based on different papers or based on your way of understanding. So you can, it will be very helpful to have figures from your own uh, way of thinking. So if you think about this way, it works this way, then try to draw a new figures based on that. Try tools if available, maybe you can run the simulation or the, the code and see how it looks, provide some screenshots from the output. Maybe the audience will understand, understand you better in this way. And of course, you need to consult with the mentors, with the TAs about the things that you uh, have come up. That's why you need to prepare a draft of these slides before you come to the meetings. But of course, before you prepare the draft, you need to discuss with the mentors about the date of the meeting. So um, in your uh, draft presentation, explain the motivation for the work, clearly present the technical solutions and the results, include a demo if appropriate. Again, not all of them, you can run a code or run a simple simulation. It might be hardware architecture that you need to design first. So if, if it is available, if it is possible, please do it. It will be very nice to have it. Or maybe you can find a short video explaining the architecture or the new processor or the new technology. So all of these will help you a lot to explain the things in very few minutes. And you need to outline limitations or improvements of that paper. Again, this can be in a form of weaknesses or strength, or maybe uh, you can introduce the things while you are explaining the methodology. I'm going to tell you that this method is not efficient, for example. So you can use something like this, or show a figure where it shows this proposal the performance is in this area, but there are other proposals can shift the performance to this much. So you can use these kind of things uh, while you are presenting the main core of the uh, paper. And always focus on key concepts. Don't present all of the details. Present just the important things. For example, when you present uh, machine learning, we are not here to learn machine learning, basically just teach us what is important to understand the problem. So in machine learning, we do this and this, but this is limited because this and that. And for that, this paper is trying to tackle this. That is good enough for us. Same thing for genomics and all these applications. We are not here to learn genomics or bioinformatics and so on. Um, so you need to meet the mentors for sure, twice at least. Uh, prepare for this meeting, schedule them early, send slides in advance, leave some time for the mentors, because again, these mentors are us uh, who, who are working on their own research project. They are very busy these days, so please give them some time to uh, 
give you a very good feedback, actually. That's why you need to schedule this meeting in advance. Don't wait until you prepare the draft slides. So you can schedule it early, and then meanwhile, waiting for that meeting, you can prepare your draft. Make sure you address their feedback. Again, you need to appreciate whatever they uh, tell you to do. Uh, this is a very important uh, experience for you and for them as well. And you need to fix them and be ready for the presentation day. So all these meetings are mandatory. You cannot avoid them, you cannot skip them. At least one week before the talk, and you need to have two meetings. Of course, the first session, um, the first two students who will be presenting it will be very challenging for them because they will have about two weeks to prepare, but we will consider that. We will uh, keep it in our mind when we grade them. All right, so grading and feedback. Again, this, um, all the benefits you learn in this course is not about grading, but is about learning how to present the things. If you learn how to present all of these, don't worry about the grades. If you did a very good job in the presentation day, then don't worry about your grade. So we have the large portion of the grade goes to the quality of your presentation, which is 60%. So how well did you understand the material? How well did you present it? How well did you answer the questions? And you need to be prepared to explain uh, technical terms. So did you explain the things in a nice way such that all the audience understand it or not? And by um, explaining the things in a nice way, um, you are motivating the audience to uh, understand you and, uh, and be uh, very to understand you and um, basically participate in the discussion. So if you don't explain the things in a nice way, don't expect audience to participate with you. They might just keep silent and don't ask questions. Why is that? One of the reasons could be that you didn't explain the things in a nice way. That's why you need to stop, keep asking questions if um, they are good, then you continue. If not, uh, repeat the things in different way and so on. So this is a very nice way to practice how to deliver a good talk. And um, we will take into account again the difficulty of the paper and the time you had to prepare, especially for those the first uh, two students who present the first week of student presentation. And we have this second large portion of the grade goes to the final synthesis report. So in this report, we will have different type of questions um, covering all presentation that will be presented throughout the semester. And again, uh, you can go to the previous semester, which is already linked in this course page, and you can go to synthesis report and see how it looks from the previous uh, semesters. It will be uh, something similar to that. We might change a few things, but somehow it will cover the same ideas. So how well did you understand some of the paper presented during the seminar? Again, this is similar to the weaknesses and strength. Don't just say, I enjoyed this paper or that paper was very great. Give reasons, give more uh, information about why this paper do you think it was interesting and so on. As we said, the attendance is important. Um, um, we will grade you based on the attendance and the quizzes. So the quizzes are very important to answer them, submit them within two hours after the lecture. So again, these are very simple quiz just to measure whether you pay attention to the lecture, did you understand it and so on. So to answer the quizzes, you don't have to read the paper basically. So these questions are basically extracted from the slides that the student will present. So if you just attend the, the slides or the talk, you should be good enough to answer these quizzes. And by participating uh, offline and online during the presentation and uh, during the online session for Piazza, and um, when you interact with the presenter, this will guarantee that you get 10% bonus at least, or at most. So do you have any questions for the grading? Yeah, apparently you need to pay attention to the presentation, but all of these are important basically. 
All right, so let's see how many of you um, present. Can you please raise your hand if you keep listening to this talk? All right. Now we need more, more, please. All right, we got all of you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, so after the grading, the feedback. So um, this is the feedback from our side. So we will try to briefly discuss strength weaknesses of your talk in the class. So probably Professor Onur Mutlu will tell you where are the weaknesses or the strength of your presentation. Or maybe any one of us maybe will tell you that this was not clear. And maybe through the online discussion, we will give you some feedback or during the mentor meetings. And uh, don't worry, it will be a very clear, friendly manner that this was not correct. You could do it this way, or this was wrong, this was not clear, and so on. But uh, probably the, the, the mentor meetings will raise a lot of feedback. So expect the good uh, part or large portion of the feedback to come from the mentors during your presentation, where they will laterally teach you how to do the things, how to do a very nice talk. Okay, uh, yeah, we have a question. Please, Stefan, go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Stefan? Okay. Here we don't have a question. All right, so the expected schedule. We will meet once a week and the normal lecture time. Uh, um, so in the first a few weeks, we will present ourselves. We will show you examples how to deliver a very nice talk. Uh, these examples, real uh, conference presentation that we already presented through uh, some conferences. And um, yeah, so it seems we have a question. David, yeah, please go ahead. David? No, I just raised the hand uh, that I want to make a presentation. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Sorry. Yeah, it comes late. I don't know why. All right. No, no worries. Okay. So uh, we will have uh, two presentations uh, per session. This is after we present. So within the first two weeks, I guess, or three weeks, including this week, we will present. After that, all the students will start presenting two per uh, session. So the next meeting will be next week as well. Um, your presentation will start on October 8th. And we will have in total uh, 22 presentations. We have 22 st registered students. And each presentation will take uh, around 50 minutes. Could be more, um, but we don't expect to have it less than 50 minutes. This including questions and discussion. So we'll have about 15 minutes uh, discussion included in the 50 minutes. But don't worry, we will not stop you if you exceed the 50 minutes. So it's not a hard limit. Uh, the paper assignment, as we mentioned, we will send you more details about this, but it will be done through Moodle, where you can choose the paper that you like or you prefer. And um, please study the list of papers, see what are the topics covered. Uh, if you are interested in different topics than they presented, or if you are interested in various topics, please just pick papers uh, from all these uh, topics. And we will try our best to assign you the, the top preferred paper. Uh, so please always check your uh, official email because we send uh, normally the announcement through Moodle that will send directly to your email and the Moodle account. Um, we will try to send directly to your email as well sometimes. So please be responsive and act accordingly. So especially with uh, scheduling the meeting with mentors. So this is very important. You need to do this early. Again, this is a reminder for the homework, the first one. Uh, so the due date is September 24th. Uh, it's already online, as I mentioned. It's very simple homework. Don't worry about it. But you need to worry about submitting it because this is very important for uh, continue the course. Uh, the paper review, we didn't announce it yet. It's not online, 
but we are going to send you details soon, maybe within the coming days, maybe next week. Uh, we will see. All right, uh, I think that's all for today. Again, uh, um, Professor Honor will send you the recording for the first part of uh, this lecture. Um, uh, if you have a question, feel free to ask me now, or you can send to the entire list of TAs uh, where any one of us can uh, respond to your questions. Anything not clear about the logistics of the course, the way you need to present, or the grading, or anything in general about the course? Okay. Again, this course is for bachelor and masters, for electrical engineering, for uh, computer science, for IT department or different uh, uh, departments. So yeah, I think you're already aware about the requirement for the course that you need a digital design course or digital technique. Now I think we have a different name for the course. Um, but yeah, check all these details on the web page of the course. I think it will be very nice, very interesting course. Uh, we have very nice topics to cover and you'll have so much fun interacting with the mentors. Yes, Vector, please go ahead. Hello, does it work? Hello, yeah. Hiya. Um, just one question. So there, every paper gets just one person uh, presenting it, right? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. right. okay, okay, thanks. But anyone can pick uh, the paper when we send the list of papers for uh, preferences. So mm -hmm. maybe 10 of you choose the same paper. This is unlikely to happen, but can happen. That's why in this case, it will be very hard for us to assign you the most preferred paper. That's why we ask you to choose uh, yeah. okay. 10 uh, best paper, for example. Okay. And you can rank them from one to five such that we know that, okay, you want this the most, this is the second and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Yes, please go ahead. Um, the quizzes only start once the presentations start, right? No, the quizzes starts right after the uh, the session, not the. Uh, I mean, yeah, but like, there will no be not be any quiz today or next week, right? No, no. Okay. So this quiz is basically about the presented paper, five questions for each paper. So we will make them available, not after the presentation, but after the session. So we wait until we present two papers, then we release the quiz for two hours and you have two hours to answer it. It's very simple, multiple choice, don't worry about it. And again, okay. content uh, from the slides itself. You don't need to read the paper. But uh, as we mentioned, reading the paper will help you a lot uh, in um, interacting during the discussion session, for example, and get benefits from discussing all these ideas. All right, any more questions? No more. Don't feel shy. All right, seems everything clear. Okay.